Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Jeremiah Elioso, and welcome to Introduction to Meetings, Incentives, Conventions, and Expositions. Our topic for today is filling the gaps on an event concept. So last time we were discussing of how to conceptualize an event. And during the conceptualization process, we would be able to uh, uh, to be to be able to meet different kinds of situations. And so, um, on this topic, we would be able to learn the following objectives. So, first is to explain how to select a good venue for an event, enumerate and explain things to consider in selecting a venue, explain how to deal with legal compliance. Enumerate the four stages where customer service provider meets, meets at and explain and enumerate the marketing process of an event. Discuss how to deal with various sponsorships and explain how to deal with event budgets. So let us get started. So first and foremost, our uh, what we have to consider in coming up with an event is the availability of a venue. So in choosing a venue, we have to take a look into the following considerations. First is you have to ask yourself, what is the event title or what is the event type? Because there are various venues which are deemed appropriate for a specific type of event. And we are aware that uh, there are two types of venues. Um, venue can be held um, indoor, and then there's outdoor. And different uh, types of venues would pose different kinds of advantage and disadvantage and also different kinds of risk. And it is very risky to have a, an outdoor venue primarily because of weather condition, okay? So although uh, there are events that are appropriate for an outdoor event or an outdoor venue, but then as an events planner, you have to consider to form a risk management procedure to be able to handle this kinds of situation. Then also you have to consider what is the purpose or what is the objective of the event because your venue would be able to assist you accomplish that objective or purpose in mind. Then the event flow. Why is it important that we are aware of the event flow? The event flow would determine the amount of space, the layout that is needed for the event. What are the activities that will be done as part of the program? Like, would you be needing a dance floor or a huge space where you would be able to accommodate the activities that will be done as part of the event or as part of the program. So you have to consider that um, the flow of your event. And, and of course, the number of attendees or the number of participants because um, the venue or different types of venues would have different um, carrying capacity. Of course, you don't want to uh, appear that your event um be be crowded because this is an indication that you are not able to forecast the amount of participants that will be coming into your event and you don't want to have an event by which the venue is very large and yet the number of attendees is very small because that will create an impression that your event is, is not successful because of the low number of attendees. So you have to find the, the perfect fit for the size of the venue that will match the number of attendees. And now that we're in the new normal, it's very important to also consider social distancing. And uh, because of the layout consideration, we have to uh, avoid overcrowding and such that there is a um, enough space in between guests to avoid overcrowding and close contact with each other. Then the background of the attendees or the participants' profile could also uh, be helpful for you in um, in venue selection because there are your your participants or your guests would have different set of requirements, different needs, different wants. So 
maybe as a as a host of the event or as the event planner you have to be um considerate that you would be able to um attend to the needs of your guest then what is the image required for the theme okay if your theme is perfect fit for an outdoor event, then you have to make sure that you will be able to capture the imagery that you want to portray to your audience. And then facilities and amenity services to be provided. You have to double check if um, the, the, the site that you will be using would have the available facilities and amenities that are necessary or that's needed for the event. And then is the event or is the event site accessible? Is this accessible um, by, by public transport or are the roads really accessible or is it also visible? Are there available signages that will assist or that will direct your guest in locating the venue. And then, of course, there's venue rental. You have to check if, if the venue rental fits to the budget of your client. And then you have to identify what are the package inclusion. Some, because sometimes the venue would allow a certain number of hours for the use of the facility. You also have to note of the setup time of uh, uh, the both the the ingress and the egress, and then is that is the venue available? Because ultimately, when the venue is not available, or there's no av available venue, then that will lead to the cancellation of the event. And then, what's the preference of the client? Because uh, when all of these things are considered you have to make sure that this will be approved by your client and now that uh, we're aware of the considerations of uh, an event this are the the sources of site selection or um this are the different organizations or um area by which we could find reputable suppliers for our venue that is perfect for our event first is tourism organization so uh the tourism organization would have a list of different tourism enterprise most especially with the different um restaurants facilities that can accommodate different types of events say a uh, function hall or gymnasium and many different facilities that could be available for uh for use for a specific type of event then, of course, the, the World Wide Web or the Internet would have um, an abundance of information by which we could look um, and search for reputable suppliers or uh, venue that would cater to our needs. And then the convention bureaus, trade journals and magazines and venue publications. So these are all sources for site selection. All right. Once we have, or since we're all aware of the different considerations for in the selection of an event and the, the sources of information, these are the factors that you have to note when you are inspecting for a site venue for your event. First is the parking space for the participants. Um, this is one big consideration because um, considering that you have noted for the accessibility of, of the site, you also have to make sure that there's enough parking space for your attendees because um, that would be a great inconvenience for the guests to find a, um, a parking that would be very convenient for them. So uh, please note that... Uh, your venue of choice should have an available parking facility. And then stairways or hallways and other public areas by which um, your, your guest could, could access. And, and we also have to note for inclusivity that the, the, the venue um, has, is accessible for PWD or um, people with disability or are, are exceptional um, people 
um, who would want to join or participate in the event. Then also please note of the entrance and exit. These are important areas, most especially in risk management, um, so that when when there are um, situations, um, it's important that we are, are aware where to access the entrance and the exit. And then the area for registration such that um, you can have an ample space to manage the queue or the line of the guest. Then appropriate ventilation, restrooms, and other logistical requirements. All right, so we are done with the ben venue. Now we have to deal with legal compliance. When we say legal compliance, this pertains to all the laws related to the event management industry and all their ramifications. So in, in handling an event, it's very important that um, all of our undertakings is within, uh, I mean, it's, it's legal. Okay. Of course, since we're doing business, we have to make sure that everything is in accordance with the law. And these are some sources of information. We, of course, we could seek for the assistance of a legal expert, which would um, assist us in all of our undertakings. Um, of course, we are dealing with uh, many different suppliers. We have to make sure that all of the business undertakings of both parties are legal. And uh, again, the World Wide Web has an ample information which could assist us in all of our undertakings. Industry associations, um, at, at the modern times, we are very fortunate to have an abundance of information. There are a lot of webinars which um, allows us to have a sharing of information to assist us in our business. Then, of course, the knowledge based on books is uh, of prime importance. So you have to always be updated with what's going on and of some of the theoretical basis of all of your business undertakings, your, your clients also, and of course, with your suppliers. These are some permits and legal considerations that you have to undertake in handling an events management business. All right. So as part of the business requirements, of course, you have to have your name registered in the Department of Trade and Industry. You have to make sure that your name is unique. It's easy to pronounce. Uh, there's no other name that would have, um, there's no other name, okay, or something very similar because you don't want to confuse your client. You, you would want to have that easy memory recall like say for example my business name is sir juicy jerry although that's not yet registered with the dti but i am planning to register um this very soon and of course when you establish your business it's very important that you secure the following permits such as the barangay permit mayor's permit business permit sec registration if you are a corporation Okay, and uh, of course, contracts. These are binding agreement between parties. And whenever I would have um, dealings with my clients, I always ensure that the contract is in order so that both parties are aware of their obligations with each other. Then fire safety inspection to check your, your building so that um, this is uh, for, for the protection of your business. Then BIR or ta taxation, okay? And then for the human resource, uh, we have to make sure that you, you follow the protocols of the Department of Labor and Employment and then contracts and insurance and medical clearance for your people. And then for the operational uh, requirements you have to abide by the environmental protection of course since we are um, using resources coming from mother earth we have to ultimately protect because uh, the trend nowadays is sustainability we have our moral obligation to protect our mother earth 
and then security. Of course, for events, we're dealing with crowd. You have to make sure that there's a crowd control plan. And sometimes events are beyond our control. And we have to seek for a third party to, to assist us to, to manage our crowd, such as the assistance of security guards, bouncer. And also we could tap into the proper agency, such as the, the police officer, fire officer, whenever possible. Then if we are to deal with food, we have to make sure that our food is safe and uh, abide on the occupational health and safety standards. And now that we're under no normal, we are following the, the protocols of IATF. Okay, so moving forward, we are now heading to the marketing strategies. Of course, this is important. It's important that the event shall be marketed with so much promotional efforts like emphasizing what the attendees will get or like having fun with excellent performers or learning from excellent speakers or enjoying from well-known entertainers, entertainers. And when we talk of marketing strategies, of course, we're using different um, medium, whether this is in print, this is by audio or visuals we could maximize the fullest potential of of marketing and different advertising techniques so that it will reach our target market of course different medium would have different costs of marketing but now since we're on the 21st century um we are specializing into the use of social media platform to advertise our or to market our events. Okay. And all of this has to be considered in all of your marketing collaterals. And at this point, we are discussing the four stages where interaction between customer and service provider occurs. All right. The first, the first stage is pre-purchase. So during this stage, you have to think of how are you going to, um, to catch the attention of your audience, okay? Of course, different events would have different types of audience. But regardless of the type of audience, you have to tease your um, audience or you have to call their attention so that they will be able to purchase a ticket or to attend to your event. And the activities could, or you could use interactive website or the World Wide Web. Um, it's a very vital tool now during the pre-purchase um, stage of marketing. Email, okay? Um, different telemarketers and um, the... The, the marketing department are using or taking advantage of um, email communication by which they are feeding information to the different set of target customers to, to advertise their event or at least um, get or, or feed this information to the, the target market and the telephone inquiry. Okay, and then of course, number two, the second stage is the purchase or pre-event and this involves the selling of the tickets all right um like like say for example for a concert um tickets can be sold at ticket nets or on the internet or the actual selling of the tickets okay transportation uh, you see that uh, different transportation whether this is by air land or sea could be an advertising medium in itself. We see advertisements on LRT, on taxi, on, on train, um, on, in, in the airport, okay? So this could be a medium by which we could advertise our events. And also in the parking, um, the, the different signages, queuing, entry, and security check are uh, part of the, the pre-event um, stage of marketing. And the number three is the actual event, okay? So we have to consider the seat allocation or the proper seating arrangement, and you have to have usher 
or event marshals to assist your guests in in their proper seats that has been assigned to them maybe you could have coding or like say for example for weddings uh we're following uh proper table arrangement or seating arrangement but usually for public event we're we're using codes which one is for this um set of tickets this is for for the the bleacher on the right this is on the left and this is one on top and this one is for the vip and then the food and the beverage entertainment performance participation information first aid merchandise sale loss and found these are all elements of the event and in in building up your event concept you have to consider all of this in your proposal and then the fourth and last stage is the post event okay so when we say post event this is after the event and this there's also um as an event manager you also have to think what happens after because this is still part of the job to be able to to manage the exit and the queue and how would your um customers or guests um go home and you should be able to at least locate or identify what are the different transportation facilities to mobilize the exit of your guest and some of uh, the online resort results where would this be available the documentation the photos would be up on various um, social media um in, in print and in in the news okay some photographs memorabilia souvenirs etc all right so since we are aware of the four stage of our marketing strategies these are the steps in how to market your event okay because i understand that you are already planning for your big event so this will guide you or assist you in marketing your event step number one is to identify the features of the event of course different events would have different features and naturally there are different ways by which you could successfully market your event to your target market okay you have to ask this question what will make the audience go or patronize the event how will you tease them how will you call their attention okay because ultimately the information has to be disseminated whether this is a webinar or this is a live event it's a concert or a wedding you have to ensure that they there is an awareness and there are different campaigns by which we could send out the information so that the event will be known to your target audience are they going to benefit on this activity you have to check on your objective what is the objective of this event is this for fundraising is this for fun and entertainment is this for knowledge is this for skills enhancement so different types of event would have different objectives so you have to stay true to your core or the purpose of your event so that you have to anchor all of the directives of the marketing into attaining the purpose or objective of your event okay step number two is to know your target audience carefully so just like with how you um fulfill this step in in some of the business related functions you have to identify the demographic profile and the psychographic profile of your market it would be important if you're aware on how to segment your market because different market segments different demographic profile and psychographic profile would have different characteristics different needs wants and demands and when when you are aware of that you will know where to focus say for example that your target market would be students knowing the fact or knowing the characteristics of the studentry of your target market you would be able to design 
a a marketing strategy that will call the attention that will meet the objectives and that will fulfill the needs wants and demands of this specific market okay we're heading on the third step which is to identify how needs and wants of the audience will be met so you have to know the needs and wants of your target audience so that they will not hesitate to patronize your service. And I am sure that you are aware of Abraham Harold Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is presented in a pyramid. So since you are aware of those needs as, an, uh, as a provider of a product, which is an event, you have to make sure that your event will fulfill the gap or will fulfill the needs of your client so that at the end of the day they will be satisfied or the purpose or the objective of the event will be met step number four is to learn how audience decide in availing services First is to focus on your customer decision-making process. Now, in marketing, there is a study on who or what makes them decide to, to go into this or to purchase this. Who are the decision-makers? Because sometimes it's the actual person who decide for themselves. Or sometimes it requires a, an influencer for them to be influenced to purchase that, that product. Okay, so you have to be, um, you have to find that information or on who decides on, on that um, matter. Then timing. The team should know when people usually receive the salary of their employees. Okay, um, and in the Philippine setting, we usually would be aware that um, people would have money on the 15th and on the 30th. So maybe the, the marketers could capitalize that information that during this time, they have a lot of money, okay? So maybe during the selling period or during the first stage of marketing, they could um, schedule properly the marketing activities or the selling activities so that um, when this information comes along, they have money to spend for these needs or to spend for the event that you are planning. And then competitive pressures and motivational factors and spending behavior of your consumers. So this is part of the psychographic factor, okay? And how much the consumers are willing to pay for a particular service. That's why uh, this is part of the demographic profiling it would be helpful to identify what's the job or occupation of your target market and how much is their salary so that we would be able to um, read between the lines how much is their disposable income. We could assess how much um, they are willing to spend for this kinds of activity or event. Step number five is organized price and ticket program. Programs can include typing up or tying up with tour wholesalers or other ways that the event will be promoted because um, this seasoned professionals know and understand better how to capitalize or how to be able to promote and sell your tickets wisely. Sometimes they bundle prices or they put this on promo. And as you are aware that um, when, when it's promo or it's on sale, usually people have the tendency to jump into sale or to jump into products which are on bundled or discounted prices. And uh, the distribution of tickets shall be clear and sales shall be emphasized to achieve team goals. Of course, um, different firms would have different financial objectives. And we do not stop on just making our customers happy 
or making our clients happy and fulfilled. But as a business, of course, we have to make sure that since we are producing this event, we have to uh, meet our financial objectives or we have to be able to meet our sales quota or sales target because we are a business. And step number six is to promote the event. There are many ways by which we could promote the event. And as I have mentioned, there are different uh, marketing strategies or medium that we could use to promote our event. We could lay down our activities in promoting the event. Okay, There are events promotion, there are social media activities, um, TV guestings, radio guestings, publicity, etc. And this could all help promote and establish your event. Promotional efforts shall highlight the difference of this event to another similar event to ensure that the prospective clients will know their know whether they will attend or not. So please note that different marketing strategies, different medium would have different power. They have different reach. Okay. So say for example that you want your event to have national attention because it's a national event. So you have to choose a medium that will ultimately hit or target your desired market and it will reach the all of the target market so you have to choose a medium that is very powerful enough to um to capture the your target market and the last step is to assess efforts in marketing okay i mean not all marketing efforts would have the same power, okay? You have to ultimately evaluate which one is deemed effective because there are some marketing activities that are very much costly and it's not within your budget. So you have to check which one is within your budget and which one would you feel is more effective that could reach the target market. And effectiveness shall be carefully monitored and systematically done. Sometimes companies are doing research. They hire a marketing team or marketing professionals because these people know which one is the best marketing effort or strategies to be able to catch the attention of your target market. All right, we're done with marketing. We're heading to sponsorship. Okay, sponsorship refers to the partnership between the event organizer and the sponsor organization for objectives and both parties will surely benefit from. To some, sponsors has the absolute control over the event while some has only part. So, um, sponsors would definitely be a partner in our event, okay? And both parties should benefit from this sponsorship. So, what are the significance of sponsorship? Okay. Sponsorship provides additional cash or budget. If the company or the sponsoring company will be able to provide you with cash or budget, definitely that would be a big help in the achievement of your goals. But not all sponsors can provide you with cash. Some would provide anything which is valuable or would be helpful to the execution of the event, such that there are some sponsors who would aid you with supplies or um, anything in kind for um, the successful execution of the event. Say, for example, a restaurant, instead of money, may be able to provide you with meals that you could provide to your guests, to your VIPs. And you have to note that this um, these things would have greater value because this, is, um, this assists you 
well in the execution of your event, okay? And sometimes sponsors would provide you for telecommunication expense, um, considering that uh, we have big telcos company and a lot of events are sponsored by this big telcos company because uh, many different events would require you um, communicating with different um, stakeholders of the event and so this telcos company as sponsors could be a very great help in the accomplishment of your event objective and then of course it support they could assist you with some um, technicalities okay i remember many pageants would would have um, ama computer college or sti um, as major pageant sponsors to assist for um for the judging system okay and provision of physical items such as different merchandise that can be used for raffle for games um sponsoring of um of t-shirts or decorative materials so basically, sponsorship could provide you with anything that could be of great value to the event. And um, the sponsors um, would also have, it's, I mean, the, the one that we have mentioned are only, we have mentioned the benefits for the organizer. But later on, we will um, discuss how could the sponsors benefit from sponsoring an event. Okay, but in, in um, looking for a sponsors, you have to ask this pertinent questions. So to approach a potential sponsor for a particular event, some questions need to be answered so, so that we are ensured that we are at the right track. First question, what benefits do sponsors can get from sponsoring the event? So later on, we'll check on that. What are the benefits that sponsor gets from sponsoring the event? Is the sponsorship exclusive or not? Because um, sometimes we might not be aware that um, the sponsors that um, we have, the sponsors that we have are, are competitors. So it would be you're, you're putting them in an awkward phase or awkward situation. Are there no other sponsors of the same line of the business so as to address conflict of interest? And this is what I'm telling you. So you have to be aware on the sponsors lineup such that there's no competition with each other so that there's no conflict of interest. And how would the sponsor want his sponsorship to be exposed, okay? Because that's one of the benefit of um, sponsoring an event, exposure, okay? Now, since we have these things in mind as uh, questions that we have to consider before we reach out to our sponsors, who are the possible sponsors that we may reach, okay, to assist us with our event? Sponsors could be individuals, could be politicians, most especially at this time that we're on the election season. Um, politicians are very much generous because, of course, they will benefit from this. They will be able to reach greater potential, um, potential number of votes from the attendees. Who would know that they are major sponsor for an event? Could also be artists or celebrities, author, public figure, social media personality, because they will greatly benefit from this because they want more exposure. Sponsor could also be private institutions or companies such as the telecommunication, food establishments because they want more publicity to raise awareness of their brand, industry associations, organizations, etc. And of course, educational institutions could be great partners, whether this is private or public, basic education or higher education. 
Okay, but you have to make sure that both of you have the same objective. And then various government agencies could also assist you, um, such as the local government unit, Department of Tourism, Department of Health, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, among others, could be great sponsors for the event that you have in mind. Now, as a sponsor, these are the benefits that they will reap from sponsoring your event. One is image building, most especially if you are new in the industry to create more exposure or to be able to build your image that you are very supportive to an event, you could be a sponsor to an event. Then brand preference, okay? Sales, okay? Because there are different, um, you, you have to clarify the 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 nature of the sponsorship because there there are some brands who will give you um sponsorship however they would be demanding that they be part of the event by by selling products or merchandise so both i mean it's a win-win situation and it could give media exposure because most of the events are media documented whether this is on radio this is on tv or on social media um, whenever that um, you would see the logos of this brands there is um, an awareness so um how would the as, as mentioned a while ago how could we help or assist our um or how could we expose the sponsorship of of our sponsors such that we are aware that like for pageants or for community events um the host would um always plug or promote the the sponsors as um during the the host spiel so in that way the the sponsors are are exposed or there is a media exposure in print. Um, sometimes we're seeing this in poster or um, souvenir programs such that there is a gold sponsor, silver sponsor, bronze sponsor. So gold sponsors would have whole page advertisement. Um, silver sponsor would have half page advertisement and so on and so forth. All right, so I think that we are nearing the last phase of this module, and our next topic is on budget. Okay, according to Wagon 2009, the first step in financial management of an event is to ask the following questions. What is the main, the aim, or is the aim to make a profit? Um, not all events would aim to have profit because there are some events which are most especially the ones for social events like birthdays weddings it's it's not their aim to create a profit because it's not a a business related event but for business related events some would have the ultimate goal of earning profit selling products okay so first is to know the first step in dealing with an event budget is to know your objectives. Okay. Then how much will the event cost? Since a while ago, we have noted of the requirements of the event. Um, and you have laid that down. You have to be able to find a supplier that will be able to provide you with the needs of the event within the target budget. Because you don't want to be over budget, right? What are the revenue sources? Okay. How many tickets to be sold to break even? Because you have to set that as a target to be able to create profit. What is the cash flow situation? So it's important to have an understanding of this um, cash flow or financial situation so that you will be able to have a successful um, meeting of the financial objective of the event. And what control systems are needed to avoid fraud? A proper auditing should be in order to be able to check 
on to have a check and balance of your financial or accounting system and how will legal and taxation obligations be met so uh, here i have 11 tips in budgeting okay tip number one is to track the cost for site rental that is the first topic that we had for this module so uh because much of the budget for an event will go to site rental so you have to allot a a budget for for site rental and make sure that it is within your budget tip number two is to estimate the cost for catering services because according to study approximately 30 percent of the event budget goes into the food so it's very important that, of course, we would want to satisfy our guests with food, but we have to consider that the, the catering service provider that we would have for the event will meet the financial objectives or will meet the budget that we have created for the event. Tip number three is to document the charges for transportation because in organizing the event of course you will be getting to and from a particular destination a particular venue uh you have to go to different suppliers you have to account for the transportation because that's part of the logistics management but lucky are lucky we are very lucky because we're on the 21st century and uh with the use of technology we could take advantage of uh, Gcash or online banking to pay for our um, clients. So this could be reduced. Okay. Um, tip number four is add expenses for venue decoration. The decoration plays a significant part in the event because that can transform an ugly venue into a beautiful venue. So if you're really into aesthetics and ultimately to satisfy the eyes of your client, you have to account for a chunk of the budget will go to the decoration of your venue. Tip number five is to document fees for entertainment and equipment rental. So, and, and this covers the professional fee of your hosts, of your artists, of the... The rental for let's say for example the band or acoustic led this all forms part of the entertainment aspect of your event on the sixth is to summarize charges for printing and this would cover all of your stationaries such as invitation poster missalette um, tickets, etc. All of the printing should all be accounted. And uh, on the seventh is to identify expenses for all of the activities that you are doing for the event um, during the ingress, the actual, and the egress aspect. Okay. And tip number eight is post other expenses that may be incurred. So all of this has to be documented. All of the receipts has to be intact so that when you liquidate, you would have a balance statement of account. On the ninth, is have a contingency fund category. What do we mean by contingency fund? We have discussed contingency plan and contingency contingency fund or contingency budgets just like the same that you have to be, because for events there are um scenarios or there are situations that you're not able to forecast or you don't want to happen but it happens and you have to have an emergency fund and you have to use this contingency fund probably a lot 10 to 20% of the budget should go into the contingency fund so that you are ready whenever there's unavoidable situation and you have a, an allotment should this unfortunate situation happen. Tip number 10 is to summarize the projected expense of the event. 
So from time to time, or it could be at the end of the event, you liquidate all of your expenses, you review if you are able to meet the financial objectives. Are you um, within the budget or are you able to, to have discounts or are you on over budget? Okay. So that's part of the, the post event activities that you have to undertake as an event manager. And the final tip is to summarize the actual events of actual expenses of the event. So you have to review the, the budgeted or the forecasted versus the actual. And later on, you'll see if you have savings or you are on over budget. Okay. So we have actually covered our topic on filling the, the event gap. Now, do you have questions, guys? If you have questions or anything in mind, please um, comment below and I'll try to get back to you to answer to your questions. I hope that you have understood our discussion for today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for, late, for more updates on our subject introduction to meetings, incentive conventions, and expositions. And our next topic would be the event proposal. And I am very much excited to see and check your event proposal. I'll see you in our next session. Again, this is Professor Jeremiah Elioso, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.